Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make an abstract liquid spiral. So we're gonna start by spiraling up our shirt the way we always do. I like to use a hemostat and the microwave splatter guard. So smooth out as many wrinkles as you can. Decide where you want the center of the spiral to be and give it a little pinch. And then click your hemostat down on the first click. It does not need to be overly tight. And then give the hemostat two or three twists. With your opposite hand, you're going to create the pleats creating the spiral. So if you notice, I sort of pull the shirt out and around the uh, splatter guard. You don't want to put a lot of tension on the center of that spiral because you run the risk of tearing a hole in your shirt. So go as far as you can using the splatter guard till you can't go any farther. Unclick the hemostat, hold down the center of the spiral, and gently wiggle the hemostat out. And for this project, I'm going to secure it by using my favorite rubber bands. And they're listed down below in the description box. And I think I called them my favorite rubber bands purple. Anyways, you can find them on Amazon and they're just the perfect size for creating spirals. Very rarely do my spirals taco up. And if you're brand new to tie dyeing, you might say, well, what does that mean taco up? Well, tie dyers refer to a tacoing project like it folds in on itself in the shape of a taco. That's rather undesirable. So that happens when you're using rubber bands that are just too tight or you haven't spaced them out enough and so it's just creating a lot of tension and the fabric can't do anything else but buckle in on itself. So I like to create a nice tight spiral. So I'm pulling on all of the loose tails and tucking them into the nearest rubber band. The reason I like to create a nice tight spiral is when you have to pick it up and move it or flip it, it won't fall apart on you. That spiral is looking pretty good. There are still a few little tails that are kind of driving me nuts, but I'll just add more rubber bands until it's all tucked in and ready to go. That's a pretty good looking spiral. Next, I like to use a washable marker to mark out my pattern. And when I mark out my pattern, I make sure to have the lines intersect through the center of the spiral. Now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye. And for this one, I'm adding the dye in a way that I don't normally do. Like usually I just do pieces of the pie. This time I'm breaking them up into like little V's inside the piece of the pie. I don't really know how to explain it, but you can just watch me do it. Now when it came to my jungle red, I think I might have mixed it incorrectly. So jungle red takes, um, four teaspoons of dye, so it has two asterisks. So I think I might have um, did the whole four teaspoons of dye, but only did a half a cup of water because it is super duper thick. And I don't like working with dye that's like this because it doesn't go down and saturate in the pleats as well. So that's a total bummer. And also I totally messed up. I wanted to go yellow, orange, red, than purple and I accidentally went yellow into red. So right here, everything is totally messed up. And I wanted to do the same thing in this piece of the pie and I was uh, just completely checked out and on autopilot and I filled the whole piece of pie up with the blue violet. So I just decided, well, it is what it is. It's tie dye, let's just have fun with it and keep on going. I'm trying to be less heavy handed with my dye. A lot of times I just way oversaturate and that's unnecessary and I think I end up wasting a lot of dye. 
So I flipped the project over and I'm essentially just going to repeat the process on the back side that I did on the top side. I added a splash of water to the jungle red and I shook it up really well and as you can see it's going on a lot smoother. And I decided that I was going to take the jungle red all the way up against the blue violet trying to avoid creating brown by mixing orange crush and blue violet. Then I take the orange crush and I just go over the edge of the red near the daffodil just to brighten up the orange a little bit. Now on the back side here I'm going to use bluebird mixed with a very little bit of the blue violet because I was running out. Um, this is left over from the Steelers shirt, so it's pretty fresh dye and I didn't wanna waste it, so we'll see what happens. And then it's recommended that you let your project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours, and I let this project batch for the full 48 hours. For those of you that love to liquid dye, I just don't get it. I do love the results, but it just seems like so much work compared to ice dyeing. Okay, now it's time for the rinse out. You want to start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. And then increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirillon. That's a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma Trading Company. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener that I also get from Dharma. And you can find the links down below in the description box, along with everything else that I use for tie dye. So make sure that you check that out. And then I put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. This shirt is super fun. I giggled a little bit when I pulled it out of the dryer because it was just like, whoa, in your face, bright and funky. And just like I said, so much fun. I'm actually kind of happy that I ended up going with one whole pie piece being the blue. I think it just really creates a cool contrast. Um, I'm gonna play around with this pattern more. I do wish that I had better saturation in some areas because the blue looks really oversaturated, but then in the warm colors, not as saturated, if that makes any sense. And the blue bird completely took over on the blue violet. You can hardly even see the blue violet in there anymore, but it, it's peeking out and it just, it kind of creates like a cool sort of, um, well, it's not DNA, but it, it just creates a cool effect. So overall, I'm very pleased with the way this shirt turned out, considering that dye placement was sort of all over the place, different from the front to the back. But again, that is the fun part of tie dye, you guys. Just about anything goes, and it still turns out looking pretty darn cool. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing!